Mr. Ivan C. Ho Ken Wang. Test mic. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Sir, uh, but there's not much to wonder nowadays, is it? We know what star is. A star is basically a flaming ball of gas in deep space, blasting out their radiations all over the universe, isn't it? Well, technically that's true, but the wonder that I'm talking about here is the distance of these stars. How far these stars really are. Now, the closest star that we can observe in our night sky is the Proxima Centauri, which is about 4.3 light years away. Wait, hang on a minute. 4.3 light years away? That is really, really far away, isn't it? How did these scientists actually come up with such measurements? Did they actually go there? Have they actually been there to measure such a vast distance between us? Highly improbable, isn't it? We haven't reached the technology yet. Now, hold that thought for a moment. Let's bring it back down to Earth for a while. Now, say, imagine if you were just driving down the highway, right? You'd realize that trees pass you by pretty fast. Relative to the mountains, they're far beyond you, right? And if you continue driving down the road, you see things moving, zipping past you really, really quickly, especially those ones in the middle of your lane, right? Now, this is because of parallax. In high school, you remember parallax era? What is parallax error? You try to read something, and then you realize, I can't read this with both eyes open. I got to close one eye, <laughs> right? Now, the reason why you close one eye is because now you have a sharper point of view from one side, and then you can have another sharper point of view on the other side. Same thing, we can actually measure the tree without actually going to the tree using very simple trigonometric functions. What I can do is I can take a picture of this tree as I'm here, and as I continue moving down that same road, and I see this tree again, and I take another picture of that tree. Using very simple trigonometric functions, I can actually measure the angle of shift that I observe and measure the distance of that tree without actually touching it. Amazing? Let's talk about the star right now. We can use the same principle to measure the distance of the star. Very basic, sim simple principle. Imagine the star. I like to see this star, and I want to see how far this star is. Now, the thing is, instead of driving down a highway to give that base distance that we need to use for that measurement, we can use something blessed to our solar system, the orbital positioning of the Earth. Now, this is where our Earth would be in January, and this is where our Earth would be in July. Now, this can set a base distance for our trigonometric calculations later. Now, as we observe a star in the night sky, so sorry, we can measure the star like that and compare it relative to the background of the stars that are far beyond us. And from there, we can use a calculation to measure how far these stars really are. It's feeling a bit small today. Don't worry. Keep shining because you don't know how, how far your light can go. Thank you. Questions? Feedback from the judges? Um, I'd just like to comment, actually. I think you're one of the few contestants who remembered that the whole idea of Fame Lab is to explain science to those who do not understand science. I do like your energy. Um, if what your previous participant said is true about quantum energy, I think we'd all be blessed with energy, as you would say. <laughs> yes, it's a good job. Um, I do commend you, and I do, uh, I, do, I do praise you, actually, for remembering to bring it back to the star, which, as I said, a few of the other participants started off with something and ended up with something else. So, yes, congrats. I wrote here brilliant because I enjoyed the presentation and it's very important to make complex ideas simple for people to learn. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Allen.